Hey guys, my name is Akshara Naguru and I'm in grade 8 and I'm 12 years old and today I'm going to be doing my science fair project on the topic skin cancers and sunscreens. As you can see by the title, hey sun, are you fun or do you burn? So I'm going to talk about my experiment now. So for the science fair project, I want you to do it on something that people would take in as information and help them in their regular daily lives. I had always wondered about sunscreens. My parents always told me to wear sunscreen and as a family, we usually go to travel to hot places like Mexico and India. I wanted to find out, is it actually helpful? Like, do I need to wear sunscreen? Although I do have darker skin. So that's why I decided to do my experiment on sunscreens and skin cancers. The main questions I wanted to ask myself and to do this project was number one, do sunscreens work? And if they do in those sunscreens, as I recently found out, which ones work better? Physical or chemical sunscreens? I will talk about physical or chemical sunscreens later in the video. Number two, I want you to know if wearing clothes, hats, sunglasses, um, being in the shade help us in like blocking those UV rays and prevent us from developing skin cancer. This is really important because if we don't know about this information, it can lead to skin cancers, which are very deadly. And if we do not cure them fast enough, it will lead to death and we don't want that to happen. Especially in North America, skin cancers are very common. To do this experiment, I needed some UV beads and UV rays and sunscreens. So what I exactly did was I applied sunscreens, all the different types, physical and chemical, from SPF 15 to 60 to these beads and I left it out in the sun and I got my results. Coming to the research, I did a lot on the skin cancers and how they develop on the sunscreens, all the types and what really are the ingredients and everything. Um, about the types of skin cancers, some of the skin cancers that are very deadly that we can develop and skin factors that give us more of a risk of developing skin cancer. So what is skin cancer? So skin cancer is the abnormal growth of skin cells, epidermal cells. It is caused by unrepaired DNA damage that is caused by our sun, the UV rays. So I'm talking to talk about UV radiation. So UV radiation is invisible energy. So we cannot see it. It's not visible light and it's also not infrared radiation. When it comes to sun, UV rays are the big culprit. So in UV radiation, we have two types of basic UV rays, UVA and UVB. So UVB rays are more dangerous, more intense than UVA rays. Both affect skin cancers. UVA affects usually the cells deeper in the epidermis, so they cause like aging and wrinkles, whereas the UVB rays damage the outermost layers and they cause most of the skin cancers. Um, they also kind of contribute to skin aging. So I'm going to talk about sunscreens now. So broad spectrum. Recently, scientists found out the full dangers of UVA. As I said, there are UVA and UVB. So broad spectrum, the term that is used to describe a sunscreen that can protect both skin against UVA and UVB rays. SPF. So SPF stands for Sun Protection Factor. Um, the SPF factor tells you how much. There's like from 15 to 60. Those are the sunscreens I used for my experiment. And it typically takes you like 15 minutes to burn. So if it says SPF 10 or SPF 60, it'll take 10 to 60 times more longer. SPF 15 and 30 do a better job in cosmetic look. So in sunscreens, there are two types, physical and chemical sunscreens. Physical sunscreens, um, they are a bit thicker, but they are not absorbed by the skin. So that's a good thing. But in chemical sunscreen, they are very user friendly, but it does get absorbed by the skin. But it's not that thick too, so that's a good thing. Hey guys, today I figured out that my sister is learning about sunscreens. So I just wanted to check which sunscreen's better, physical or chemical. As you see, the disadvantages for this is it's so hard to apply and it's so white. It's just so lotiony and thick. This one, it's easy to apply and it's so nice and smooth. But the advantages is this looks like it's always gonna work. So I'm gonna talk about my experiment now. So what I did was I took UV beads and I took different types of sunscreens and I applied them to those UV beads. And I put the same amount of sunscreen to each of those beads as a controlled variable and I put, placed it on a tray and I put it outside. And these are my results. So I left the beads out for a while in the sun 
And you can see the normal beads, which used to be a clear white bead, turn into a full color like pink and purple and orange and blue. So before they were just clear white, as I said, and now they're like an actual full color. So you can see that they definitely changed color a lot. So there was no protection, no sunscreen on it, and the UV rays made it color, change color. So I have put the other ones with sunscreens, and let's start off with SPF 15. So SPF 15, it was everything was beads, just that were white beads, and I covered it with SPF 15, and you can see that it did change color. Obviously not as much as the normal did, but it still did change. This is the least protective sunscreen that I used, as it says the Sun Protector Factor is 15. And now SPF 30 here, it's um, just a higher step than SPF 15. And it did change color a bit, but it was obviously better than the SPF 15 and normal. As you can see, it didn't change color as much as these two. SPF 50 to 60, they didn't really change color. SPF 50, these two, did change a bit, but then the SPF 60 rarely did it. Like, there's a tiny bit of color, but not as much as the other one. So, I did my experiment, but I wanted to do something more. So, I decided to experiment more with the sunscreens, and I decided to use a white shirt, black shirt, and some hats over the beads to see if there was a big difference. Here are my results. So now I'm gonna take it, um, the black cloth off and see if any of the beads change color. So as you can see, the normal ones did change a bit, the SPF did a bit, and the SPF 30 did a bit, but all the other ones didn't really. Change. So I decided to try the same thing again with a white cloth this time. So I'm about to take it off, and I'm going to see if the beads changed color, especially the normal ones. So as you can see, before I uh, took it off, it was white. And immediately uh, when the beads are exposed to the UV rays, the normal beads changed immediately. Same a bit with this SPF 15 and SPF 30, whereas the other so ones I tried did. the same experiment with hats, and I'm going to about to take it out and see if the beads changed color. And I have to do this really quick. So you can see that actually the normals changed very little as I saw. But as soon as I um, take out the hats, you can see that the UV rays that hit the beads, the normal beads immediately changed color like at an instant, whereas the SPF 15 to 60 didn't change as well as much. SPF 15 did do a bit and SPF 30, but as you can see, all the other ones did not change color as quickly as the other ones. So these are the different sunscreens I used and the different companies. Also, I wanted to know if I put the normal beads in the shade, would that prevent some of those UV rays? The beads in the sun have really, really changed color. As if you see in the shade, they haven't changed color as much as the also played some normal beads, and I also took some other normal beads and put sunglasses on top of it. And as you know, when we wear sunglasses, we don't put sunscreen around our eyes as that can cause rash. So I decided to check out this experiment. Well, um, I've left it out for a while and the beads with the sunglasses over it have not really changed as much. It's very pale. You can see it's like kind of like a pale pink, yellow, and a pale pink and yellow here. Whereas the ones without the sunglasses have clearly changed into a color. So the SPF 15 to 30 did pretty good. It blocked like 85 to 90% of the rays. Whereas the SPF 50 to 60 blocked like almost 100% of the rays. The clothing that I used, the white and the black, blocked almost 80% of the rays, which was pretty good. The hats, although, blocked 85 to 95 percent of the rays. And without the sunscreen, there was some color change in the beads, so it showed like 70 to 80 percent protection. With the sunglasses, it protected 90 percent, way better than I thought. And being in the shade helped, obviously, more than I thought. 70 percent of it was protection. And from this information, we know that sunscreen is the best way to block this UV rays which nearly makes it 100%. The manipulated variable would be the sunscreen as that's the one that I'm changing up for each of the beads. The controlled variables would be the UV beads, the amount of sunscreen I put on the beads, and the UV rays, obviously they were all the same. And the responding variable was the color change in the beads as the sunscreen effect. I also repeated this experiment obviously to make sure that I got similar results and that it was just not random. So yeah, I did do that. and. Some of the limitations was the weather. That's why I had to do it really late because I didn't find the right day where the UV index was pretty high. So they were all moderate temperatures for all the experiments I did it on as it was at the same time. 
So now I'm going to talk about the types of skin cancers. So the first one is BCC, basal cell carcinoma. So basal cells lie in the like epidermis. So BCCs arise from abnormal, uncontrolled of basal cells, and they appear on the skin surface, and they're the most common form of skin cancer. Squamous cells carcinoma, SCC, is a type of skin cancer that begins obviously in the squamous cells. This is in the outermost layer of the skin and is caused by abnormal growth of squamous cells come up as red patches. Melanoma, the most serious and dangerous type of skin cancer, develops in the cells, melanocytes, that produce melanin. Um, this is also the same thing. When it starts to grow out of control, melanoma develops. It's obviously more dangerous and it's more likely to spread to other parts of the body. So in the skin, there are different types. And I'm going to be using the Fitzpatrick classification of skin. There are six types, one to six, and one obviously being the lightest and skin being the darkest. This is really great because it tells you um, what you should do, like what's the regular like amount, like burning and stuff. So this is the skin types. This is the Fitzpatrick skin type chart. So there are factors that affect skin damage. Number one is obviously genetics. Two is aging, obviously as you get older. Hormones and conditions. Fair skin because that's less of protection from the melanin. Having a history also, excessive sun exposure, and obviously you should protect it with sunscreen, that's the best way, and also sunny or high altitude climates, so that's why in New Zealand there's way more of a risk. Moles also do affect, and family history of skin cancer. So prevention of skin cancer, as from my experiment, I know that number one is try not to be in the sun, although we do need vitamin D, and if you do, wear sunscreen, obviously. Number two, check the UV index. Until now, I didn't even know that the UV index report was even given in the weather report. And if I always apply sunscreen and wear protective clothing, also wear like a hat and sunglasses. I know I have glasses, but sunglasses you can wear. Try to be in the shade as much as possible. And number five, apply sunscreen every two hours. It does say sometimes on sunscreens that it would go up to six hours, but if you keep on applying, you for sure know that it's on your skin. So overall conclusion. So from this whole experiment, we know that sunscreen is the best method to block the UV rays. Wearing full clothing is also very helpful as it also blocks like nearly 90% of the rays. Wearing accessories such as hats don't block the rays as well as others, but still do. So please wear those when you are out. Being in the shade also does a difference. And also physical sunscreens as in my experiment, ended up being better. So when you're looking for physical or chemical, which one to pick, I would go for physical, unless you want to look for a chemical look, then chemical sunscreens. So some ways I could have extended this project would be trying this experiment with more sunscreens, trying this with full clothing and different types of clothing, also trying it in a moderate and high UV index. My future idea for this project would be to select six people of all different skin types and apply sunscreens to them and see the effect of the UV rays on them. That'd be really cool. So I wrote everything from my experiment in a logbook. And yeah, these are the pages that I did. This is like my lab report. This is a chart that I made based on the same information. This is how I kind of analyze my data. And yeah, please apply sunscreen. So if not, these are the websites that really helped me learn all of this and everything. Thanks to my mom and dad, they are recording me right now and they were the ones who ordered the EV beads and helped me get Thanks this. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it. I hope this information helped you and you will use this information later in the summer and everything. Make sure you apply sunscreen as we now know that it's the best way to prevent this from developing skin cancer.